Hello everyone, welcome to the Splatoon 3 Direct Breakdown. We are going to cover all of the new content that was revealed during the Splatoon 3 Direct. Let's waste no time and get right into it. We get to see here that the Splatsville Plaza is going to be massive compared to what we had in Splatoon 2 with the square, and maybe even bigger than the Splatoon 1 Plaza. We get a nice look here at just how good the texture quality can be. It's really amazing to see that this is on the same system as Splatoon 2. We get another look at the squid roll more in depth and we can see that it can actually deflect shots, but only from some weapons or like some amounts of ink being thrown at you, so it probably won't survive a charger hit, but it can obviously be seen here deflecting this weapon, so... Our last new Splatoon 3 map to be revealed is called Hagglefish Market, and it is pretty cool looking. I, I think this is a pretty new looking stage compared to something we got like Eel Tail Alley. Next up, we get into the returning maps. First one coming back is Hammerhead Bridge, and we also learned that Hammerhead Bridge is responsible for making travel to and from Inkopolis a lot easier, thus helping to close the lore plot hole of the Splatlands and Inkopolis being really far away, yet still fast enough to travel to quickly. We also see that the fan favorite Mahi Mahi Resort is coming back, and in total, on day one, there are 12 maps coming in. There's only 5 new maps, with 7 being returning, and 4 of them being from Splatoon 2. Those being Wahoo World, Inkbot Art Academy, Sturgeon Shipyard, and Mako Mart. Kind of an underwhelming ratio of old maps to new maps, but it's good to have this many of a starting variety of maps to play on. It's revealed that later on, Flounder Heights and a new Pyramid-style map will be coming in updates as well. We get a new look at a second weapon class, called the Splatana. It's a new quote-unquote melee weapon, that allows you to slash a straight line of ink in front of you. It's different from the brush because it's a straight slash rather than something all over the place. You can also do an uppercut called a charge slash with it, and if you hit someone with it, it's a one-hit kill. It's a three-hit kill normally, and swings a little bit slower than a brush does. For new specials, we get a look at the Tactic Cooler. It's basically a cooler that dispenses four power-ups for your team. We know one of the power-ups temporarily increases speed, but it's said that there's more than just one type of power-up. We've also got the new Wave Breaker. It marks an enemy's location, then after a certain time, if they get hit by the wave, you can kill them. You can counter this by just jumping over the wave, which is easier said than done when you're in the middle of a battle. Finally, we see the Reef Slider. You basically just go on a dolphin, and then you drive directly into people, and then explode the dolphin. I love this so much. It is such a fun concept. We also see some old returning weapons, and I am not thrilled about most of them. First off, we have Tena Missiles, then Inkjet, Inkstorm, Ultra Stamp, and Booyah Bomb. I have a strong feeling that Missiles and Inkstorm are going to be the overall weakest specials in the game, just because there are so many more new aggressive style specials in the game. That like, when you're sending off the Tena Missiles, just hop on a Reef Slider, man, you're not going to have an issue anymore then. But we'll cross the meta bridge when we actually get to Splatoon 3. We get a look at a lot of new weapon kits, which I'm going to break down here. The base Splatana is paired with Torpedo, which is coming back, and Ultra Stamp. The base Brella is going to get Sprinkler and Triple Ink Strike. Base Dualies are getting Suction Bob and Crab Tank, and by the way, I just love that the special is just called Crab Tank. Nothing creative for the name here, it's just Crab Tank. The base Splatter Shot is getting Suction Bombs and Trizuka. The Splat Roller has Curling Bombs and Big Bubbler. Slosher Kit is getting Splat Bombs and Triple Ink Strike. Glugadoolies have Splash Wall and Booyah Bomb. They are basically the new K-52 gal. Later on in the Direct, we get more weapon kits, but I just want to get them out of the way right now. Tri-Stringer has Toxic Mist and Killer Whale. 52 gal has Splash Wall and Killer Whale. Splattershot Jr. has Splat Bomb and Big Bubbler. splash matic has Curling Bomb and Ultra Stamp. sploosh matic has Burst Bombs and Crab Tank. Aerospray has Fizzy Bombs, but I'm not sure what special logo this is, so it's probably the new ones revealed today. Enzap has Suction Bombs and Tactic Cooler, so it's basically another support weapon again. Splattershot Pro has Angle Shooter and Crab Tank. 96 Gal has Sprinkler and Ink Vac. Jack Squelcher has Angle Shooter and Ink Vac. And finally, Luna Blaster has Splat Bombs and Zip Caster. So now we get into Sheldon, and you can no longer buy weapons with cash anymore. You now need to use Sheldon licenses. You get them by ranking up in battle and consistently using the same weapon. There's a new Freshness meter that works on a 5 star system. Considering 1 star gets you Sheldon licenses, I'd be willing to bet the other 5 stars also will. A Sheldon license can be used on a weapon at a level you're at right now currently. You can get a weapon above your level, but you'll have to spend more Sheldon licenses to get it. Look, in my opinion, they tried to remake the wheel with this one. Sheldon licenses are something really unnecessary, and I personally would have rather than just stick to using cash. 
but I can see with them having this to try to encourage people to use different weapons and to play longer. There's also a new level called Catalog Level. I don't think we know what this is for, but if I had to guess, it's for unlocking catalogs, which also gets you weapons, new emotes, stuff like that. But we can see that it says the first win of the day, implying that Splatoon 3 might actually have daily challenges. All this catalog stuff, which we'll get a little more into later, but I want to deal with the main stuff now. The catalogs really seem like, I, I swear to god, they seem like free battle passes. They have a bunch of them coming in the future, they unlock stuff like emotes and stuff for your locker, and they help you like rank up and stuff, they're like a faster rank, and it gets you stuff over time, and there's like a set amount of stuff in it, and there's 8 of them coming in total. This this is a free battle pass, right? I is that what we're getting here? That's what it looks like to me. But like I said, we have that daily win thing, which seems like there's going to be daily rewards here. So I, I, like, I really like what they're doing with catalogs here. We have a seriously interesting development that was not spoken on at all. There is a small fry right here, and presumably that's not our small fry from hero mode. It's just chilling over here, man. Zero explanation as to why, especially considering how intense Salmon Run is getting in Splatoon 3. There's just a random Salmonid just chilling here in Splatsville. So now we're getting into the shops. Gnarly Ed and Nails run not Couture. The new hat shop. Nails seems a lot nicer than the previous two headgear store owners, well co-owners, Mo and Crayman, which is a cool change of pace. Next we've got Jell Lafleur, whose name sounds much more suited for not couture, and he's the owner of Mano Wardrobe, the shirt store. He follows the same pattern as the other jellies and speaks an old English slash inkling. And finally, the most deserving character for an idol role, we have Mr. Coco, who runs the shoe store Crust Station and I just love him. We get to see a new gear ability role, which is called Intensify Action, which does stuff like making your squid surge faster, and is also said to help squid roll somehow, but we don't see it in-game. Unfortunately, next up after that, we see Merch, who is uncomfortably huge and scary and seems dead inside. He now talks like Spike with the Australian slang thing, showing even more of his character's descent trying to be like Spike. You can now change your main ability on your gear though, which is super cool, but it costs a ton of ability chunks. We see that we also have a new tab for a star rating system here, but still no clue as to what its true purpose is. We also get another cool thing involving gear here, is that we can now save gear combinations and switch them on the fly. I think you could only do this with amiibo before, but now you can go into settings and do it. We can see the new mode selections here. The only other option that's incredibly obvious is the invite letter, so Splatoon 3 will have in-game invites. Ranked battles are gone, hallelujah, and in their place we have anarchy battles, so they're not really gone. The main difference between this and ranked battle is that if you lose 3 matches, you can't participate till the next rotation. So actually, maybe ranked battle is better because it seems like this is going to get a lot sweatier. Anarchy battles can be played solo or in groups now, but the two modes seem pretty different. They even have different game modes in rotation at the same time, so I'm wondering if it's even possible to get to something like the new X rank in Anarchy Battle open. You can now go to the testing range while you're waiting for battles to start, which is just absolutely amazing. In the new battle tower, first off, we can see that Judd is alone, not accompanied by Little Judd. Where is he is anyone's guess. But then we get into the ghosts. The ghosts are your friends who are in-game and have lobbies open that you can join, and it looks like you finally have the choice on whether or not you want to be on the same teams as your friends. And when you're in lobbies with your friends, you can have all of your friends' ghosts with you in the testing range, so maybe you can throw your little squid parties in there instead of actually having them in the real match, so you can let me play the game how it's meant to be played. So over here, we have the introduction of battle replays. You can watch your previous battles, you can rewind and fast forward them, switch to other players' POVs. It basically throws you into spectator mode for, but for a battle that already happened. And you can share your battles too, which hopefully you can share them to places like YouTube and TikTok, and not just Facebook and Twitter. This share feature could possibly be a real sleeper agent for growth in the Splatoon 3 community, based off of how Nintendo allows us to share content. One more important thing to note here is the Splatfest region thing. It's not explained what this is, but apparently it's important enough to have its own spot. Next, we get to see the locker room. One locker is your own, and the others are people you've played with recently. You can place your weapons in here, items and gear in the lockers. This also seems to be an alternative idea to the whole idea of in-game apartments, which in my opinion is a good mix for people that want apartment customization, and for those who don't. 
it gives you a bit of extra customization without using too much developer time and resources on something that the main game isn't really about. Also, you can buy new locker items from a new type of store called Hotlantis, and the worker in here is Harmony from Chirpy Chirps. They're the band that made all the chiptune music in the last two Splatoon games. Also, we now have victory emotes. I think it's a really cool way to do emotes that won't get annoying in battles and won't turn into like a squid bagging situation. So unfortunately, squid bagging is still the only way to intimidate your enemies. And right after that, we have this. So now we're introduced to Table Turf Battle, a new mini card game. Basically, you have these cards and you take up a certain amount of blocks with said cards. You've got to somehow charge up your power and then use a special attack. There's more than 150 different cards you can collect with different inklings and octolings on them. So I wonder what the odds are that we get some unintended Splatuber cameos in Table Turf Battle. Next up we get to my favorite part of the direct, and it's all of the new Salmon Run info. So first we see this new Salmon Run stage. We get the reveal of the Slammon Lid boss Salmonid. It has a big bubbler effect, and to try to kill it, you have to go underneath its barrier to trick it into hitting the ground, then go up on top of it and splat the Salmonid. Next up is the big shot. He has a launcher that shoots the same waves that the Wave Breaker does, though he shoots them through cannonballs on the ground. And towards the end of the Salmon Run match, we get a horrifying alarm noise, followed by one of the new, yes, I said only one, there will be more King Salmonids. But we have the first King Salmonid here. Its name is Kohozuna. Other boss Salmonids will also appear while the King Salmonid is there as well. It also has a chance encounter to face the King Salmonid, so it's not guaranteed every time. We also see that the new egg cannon isn't just used for throwing golden eggs into the basket into your teammates. It can also be used to throw eggs at the King Salmonid, which will damage it more than just normal weapons will. And finally, we get the reveal of my number one personally requested Salmon Run feature that I've been wanting so desperately and even made a video on. It's called Big Run. It's a Salmonid invasion of Inkopolis in Splatsville. Big Runs only happen once every few months, but also get cool remixes of normal battle songs. Personally, this is one of, if not my favorite new addition to Splatoon 3, just because of the lore implications here. Hero Mode once again starts with us going down a manhole with Cuttlefish, who, I'm sorry, I thought he retired. We learn that the Octarians are now living in Alterna. We don't actually learn a lot in this bit, but we do see that we have full cutscenes now in Hero Mode. I'm going to do a speculation video on Hero Mode, but for now, there's not a whole ton that's actually confirmed that we didn't already know. We get to see that the shoal is back, and you can now walk around in it, and that's basically all that's going on with the shoal. It's, it's pretty cool. And guys, they finally did it. They finally made a good photo mode that doesn't require amiibo. You can take selfies, send the pictures that you take to your actual phone in real life, or put them in your in-game locker. We also get a really cool revamped recon system. You can go in any stage at any time, and the time limit was bumped up from 3 minutes to a full hour. So you can experiment with just about everything on the maps. We are now introduced to Splatnet 3. In the phone, we can see that Annie is still running the online gear store. We have something called Freshest Fits, which I'm hoping is a social media thing, showing off what people do with their inklings. Like, seriously, we had all of these brand posts on Twitter. If they're gonna do all those brand posts, they better give us something, like, to do with all these freaking pieces of clothing. Like, you better give us a way to show it off. You need to make all those brand posts worth it, Nintendo. We also get the new Wandercrust Tour. It reads here, Krusty Sean's going on a journey, and the more you ink, the more points you will get to cheer him along. Who knows, he might even bring you back a souvenir. We finally get to our new amiibo. Amiibo do the same thing as they did in Splatoon 2, but look, here's new amiibo! And they should be coming out around November or December. So, I guess I didn't notice this earlier, but they've changed Rainmaker. So now, instead of having one podium you go for, you now have multiple to do, which I think is useful for not having as many, like, 30-second blowout matches. But I'm really not a fan of this. It seems like tower control, but now you're the tower, and you can fight back a little bit. Also, the blowout matches are funny when you lose, and fun to win in, so personally, I'm not a real fan of this change. But besides that, we are now into the most important part of any live service post-launch updates. Every three months for two years, we get a new catalog, which like I said, kinda seems like a free battle pass, which is eight overall. New weapons also get added around the time every catalog drops. Although eight weapon drops sounds really weird though. I feel like we should be getting more than that. Also, Rank X, which is now called X Battle and League Battle are also coming in future updates, which isn't good. League especially has been a core feature of Splatoon and Rank X made itself one in Splatoon 2. 
So not having these at launch and making them updates isn't really something we should be bragging about Nintendo. We also get the reveal that we're going to be getting DLC at some point. They don't say how many but we are shown one and we're shown that it will have to do with something with off the hook. Hopefully it's not just one this time around though. Towards the final few minutes of the direct we finally meet our new idols and I'll, I'm just gonna let them introduce themselves man. Huh? Who are you supposed to be? So yeah, I am now officially married to Shiver. So I think it's pretty obvious that Fry isn't an inkling. If I had to take a guess personally, Cuttlefish. But that's for another video. Their news program is called Anarchy Splatcast. And guys, guess what? They did it. They, they finally did it. They added skippable news. They went through with it. It's gone. Never again, although I'm gonna watch it just to see my wife up there on the news. I mean, like, just, just look at her. She's doing so good. You should all be proud of my new wife. After that, we've got the return of Splatfest. Nintendo doesn't confirm at all how many years we're going to be getting for Splatfest, and I think that's because they don't know themselves yet. I think they want to see how popular Splatoon 3 is, but if, like, if I think, like, worst case scenario, we get Splatfest for two years again. Best case, maybe three. In Splatoon 3, there are now three Splatfest teams to choose from, which leads to some serious gameplay indications. Splatfests are now divided into two parts. The first part is a regular Turf War battle, but the second is a Tri-Team Turf War. The team in the lead gets a full team of four, but the other teams in second and third only get to go in with duos, so they have to take down the first team. There's also something that lets you get support from Deep Cut. Whoever holds the Ultra Signal for the longest, which is the beacon thing that we're looking at right here, gets to send in the Super Sprinkler, which rains down a ton of ink on the map. Also, it doesn't look like the Splatfest tees are coming back again, as everyone seems to be in normal shirts, unless I'm like blind, which I very well could be. And for the worldwide Splatfest reveal, I'm also going to let Deep Cut cover that one too. Finally, on September 5th, the first Splatoon 3 tournament will be taking place at PAX West. It's really cool to see more investment in the Splatoon Pro scene. 
Obviously, there's a lot more stuff to cover, like the Splatoon 3 website, but that's for another video. Actually, I've got a lot of videos to make now. But anyways, gamers, that is it from me. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Make sure to subscribe for the latest Splatoon 3 news. I'll be sure to cover it here. Alright gamers, see ya.